Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk about a, a book. It's going to be a review video and this is a book that is part of the challenge 12 books for 12 months of 2022. This is my May book so I'm very 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 late but better late than ever, right? So the book that I'm talking about is The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. So it was supposed to, I was supposed to have uploaded this video yesterday and it was supposed to be what I talk about when I talk about running by Murakami. But I forgot that I have to, to do a review about this one. And as this one is first in the challenge than what I talk about when I talk about running, I decided to do this uh, review first of the idiot. So there you go. So talking about the book. So the idiot, oh, I'm going to read through my notes because I have some points that I want to, to um, make and I don't want to forget anything. So I, I'm going to read through my notes. I have my computer in front of me. So please, if don't feel or don't, I hope you don't feel it strange if I'm looking down because if I'm doing that is because I'm reading through my notes so so the idiot was published in 1869 after crime and punishment that is from 1866 and before the brothers Karamazov that is from 1879 so Dostoevsky was very religious and he followed the Russian Orthodox Church and he, he was harshly critical of the Catholic Church. But he saw in Jesus Christ the embodiment of perfection. So he will mix characteristics of Jesus Christ and Miguel de Cervantes Don Quixote to create Mishkin that is the main character of the idiot. We start the story with Mishkin on a train trip from Switzerland to Russia. He is returning to his homeland after years in a sanatorium in Switzerland. So Mishkin is now between 26 to 27 years old. He was in the sanatorium as, because he, suffer, he suffers from epilepsy and is coming back because a relative of his in Russia left him a fortune. So that person died and left, in, left him an inheritance. However, Mishkin is an orphan and he had a benefactor, a doctor, who paid for Mishkin's stay in the sanatorium. But this doctor dies and that's how Mishkin is forced to return to Russia. So there's here a coincidence between real life and fiction. Because Dostoevsky also suffered from epilepsy. So this book also has autobiographical features. I don't know if feature is the best word, but elements. Autobiographic elements. And so, on the train, in the voyage that he does from Switzerland to Russia, Mishkin meets some people and starts talking to them. In this book we have a bit of dialogue between Mishkin and, and uh, those people. Those people? I don't know if that's correct. You know, you know what I mean? So. Uh, but Mishkin knows that there is a lady in St. Petersburg who is a descendant of the Mishkins. And as he has no family, 
he decides to go to this lady's house to meet her. He wasn't looking for any kind of help. He, was simply, he simply wanted to get to know this relative. So this lady's husband asks Mishkin if he was... I think they are the Yepenshins. So the, the husband asks Mishkin if he was already in a hotel. But he hadn't even thought about it. He had gone straight from the station to their house. And then Mr. Yepanshin asks his secretary to take Mishkin to some outbuildings that he had in his house. So, in the house of the secretary. So, while Mishkin is at the Yepanshin's house, he tells his life story how he was sick most of his life, how he liked children more than adults, and we realize that Mishkin is very genuine and frank. He doesn't try to seem like something he is not. And because of this, his temperament and his... Um, how do you say it? His demeanor... He is mocked often. He is often mocked by um, other characters in this book. And he is called an idiot a lot of the time. But we also see a change in the behavior of some characters when they find out that Mishkin is the owner of a fortune. Mishkin meets the potential future bride of the impension secretary, Natasha Filipovna, and falls in love. She is a very beautiful woman, but she is a courtesan. It is at this point that Mishkin finds himself in the middle of a love affair. This secretary, although he asked N Natasha to marry him, likes the youngest daughter of the pensions. But Nastasia has a large dowry, so this secretary is at an impasse. So marrying for love, or for the person that he truly likes, or marrying for interest. And this is where Mishkin becomes Ganya's carrier pigeon. So Ganya is the secretary of the impensions. And because Ganya asks him, he gives Aglaya, that is the youngest daughter of the impension, a note. And Aglaya gives Mishkin the answer orally. <laughs> so Aglaya is... how can I explain it? So she says to Mishkin that Ganya is uh, an op opportunist in a way. And... She doesn't want to ac accept his um, love or... Because what Ganya is doing is like, I like you, but I want to be sure that when I ask you if you want to be my wife, that you are going to say yes. Uh, because as he had another... Um, option with Na Nastasia, Na Nastasia, or Natasha, or Na Nastasia, Nastasia. Um, he was like, I want to marry her, although she's very rich. I want to marry you, but I want to be sure that you are going to say yes. And Aglaya is thinking to herself, like, I don't want to accept this man's love and I don't want to give an answer because the, his question is not genuine. So he's asking me with the, with the second door in the back. You know what I mean? I know this expression doesn't exist, but I hope I make my point across. So. And Aglaya says this to Mishkin, 
and Mishkin, on the way out of the house of the impension, says what Aglaya said to him to Ganya. And Ganya is like admired, like how could she say that to you? How could she tell you all, all that? So, well, Ganya would receive Nastasia's answer that night at a party at her house. And Ganya takes the prince with him to this feast, to this party. As the prince is so kind, friendly, he befriends Nastasia, but he is called an idiot. Nastasia even turns to the prince. The prince is Mishkin. So, because in this book, the Mishkin is called the prince or prince uh, a lot of the time. So, he turns to Mishkin and asks if she should, uh, should accept Ganya's request or not. And the prince says that she shouldn't. Furthermore, she takes the dowry money and throws it into the fireplace. And it seems that there is an idea of that tearing money apart or, or destroying money is associated with madness. So this is like um, a general idea in the society. And I think in many cultures, not only the Russian culture. After a short time, the prince, so Mishkin, uh, himself asks Natasha to marry him and she says no because she doesn't want to disgrace him. Here there is a cut in the story and a few months pass and Mishkin is interested in Aglaya, the youngest daughter of the impensions. But it's hard to say what Aglaya feels because she, because she constantly makes fun of Mishkin. Throughout the book, Mishkin is tricked into giving his money and he tends to fall into the trap of doing so. In this book, we have endless dialogues on various topics such as politics, agriculture, religion, and our main character is a good man who always tries to see the good in people and expects that from them, expects that from them, from the people. So he, he sees only the good. So he never anticipates the badness of others or and forgives everything very easily. The end of the book is very dramatic, very shocking and nothing goes well to anyone. <sighs> of course I'm not going to say what happens but what I can tell you about my reading experience is that I didn't enjoy any part of this book. So uh, the book is too slow for me, like so, so dragged, uh, too boring because in terms of plot, we don't have much going on. We are more focused on the characters and their interactions like boring dialogues and I was throughout my reading I was bored to death. I realized that a lot of things a lot of things passed me by and I was and uh, as I was bored I didn't pay much attention. I just wanted to grow to go through the pages until the next chapter and finish reading. Maybe this is a book to reread, but it won't be in the near future. I'm sorry, I'm a bit <laughs> tired uh, of holding, holding the book. I can't say that I would advise you to read this book. What I took from the book is that Mishkin, our main character, he was a kind man, he was naive, he was 
like a child in many ways so uh, a grown child um, and he was mocked and made fun of and I think the idiot was everyone else around him except him so I think this is a um, I, I so because I was so bored through the reading uh, and I was afraid that I didn't have catched some message of the book. I went to read some comments about it and the comments that I read were coincident with what I took from the book and that was that um, this is about how being a good person can be can have consequences and sometimes being good doesn't equal to good things happening to you because throughout this book he was taken advantage of i'm talking about mishkin um, everyone was trying to manipulate him and to almost entertain themselves with mocking him so it was so disgusting i hated that those parts but i suppose that was the point of the book so in that way i understand the the importance of this book or the idiot but at the same time i hated i hated reading it i'm sorry but oh my god it was a torture really i i hated reading this one it didn't work for me i'm sorry if it's one of your favorites or if you enjoyed reading i'm really glad for you but for me it didn't work i suppose maybe uh, a few years from now i can look at this in a, a different eye i don't know uh, I'm not hopeful about it, about that, but um, maybe, who knows. But yeah, I wouldn't say... <laughs> I don't want to be discriminatory or uh, called... Um, I don't know the term, but like discriminate because of age but i think if you are around my age or younger i don't think you will like this book i think this book is maybe when you are a bit older uh, and you have some uh, baggage in your readings and you look at the pace of the book with a different type of perspective so you don't mind or you are the type of person that you don't mind a slow really slow paced book because the action of this book is only happens at the end of the book but even then i didn't like it i it, it didn't work for me i what can i say for, for some reason, I know why I didn't like it, right? This book is only focused in character building. So it's not much about the plot in itself. It's more about the characters and the personalities and behaviors and um, morals. And so character building you know exactly the term uh, and i don't know it, if it was because of that maybe i'm more a plot person i don't, i'm not really sure if that was it um but it yeah it's a, a lot around dialogues and 
when they go to the house of uh, some person and what happens uh, between the characters, what they say to each other. Um, there's, there are some time lapse, but um, yeah, it surrounds much more about what they say to each other and how they behave to each other than the plot in itself. So be aware of that. And yeah, I'm sorry, but for me it didn't work. So I wouldn't say I would advise you to rush and go read this book. For example, I'm, uh, um, I have the, the Brothers Karamazov in standby because in the between the reading of that book I, be, I began reading other books and I stopped my reading uh, but I was enjoying the Brothers Karamazov much more than this one so I'm planning to return to that book next year so hopefully I'll be, do, I'll be doing a review video about the Brothers Karama, Karamazov as well. And I can, I, in that video, I will talk about with more depth about the book, that book. But I was enjoying so much more. I was thinking that it was really interesting. On the contrary, with the idiot, I didn't thought that at all. So I'm sorry. So yeah, this was my review, I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!